Supremacy 1914, Supremacy 1, Conflict of Nations and New World Empires are all made by the same developers Bitro Labs, expect for Conflict of Nations which is a joint project between Bitro and Dorado Games. Best to start things off with the game that started it all, Supremacy 1914. You step in the boots of a World War I commander. Human wave, artillery and trenches. God is on the side with the best artillery. This can't be more true in Supremacy 1914. Artillery are the star of the game. Smart players could maneuver their artillery to deal damage without taking in much damage. To win a fight with artillery you can bomb him with bomber planes or have a artillery duel. Naval warfare in Supremacy 1914 is simple yet engaging. In Supremacy 1914 you only have three naval units, short-range cheap light cruisers, long-range heavy-hitting battleships and stealthy submarines. Cruisers and battleship have a range attack which mean you can bombard the enemy coastline. Now moving on to the more recent version, Supremacy 1, it stick to the formula of its predecessor with auto infantry generation but add in many specialized units ranging from assault infantry to anti-air and armored trains. Artillery still play an important role in Supremacy 1, however they added a variety of new artillery from gas artillery that can spawn in gas cloud and a short-range anti-tank artillery. Moving on we are now in World War II, right away we can see a different. You can only spawn units in cities. There are no more infantry auto-generation and they had added in many new units such as motorized infantry, militia, commando, attack bomber, battleship, nuke and all kind of units. Special abilities have been added to certain units like militia have stealth in some terrains and armored car have scout. There are debuff you get when you overstack your units. All province have a change of revolting but small provinces don't have victory points. Let's step back shall we? New World Empires is set in the Age of Discovery, like in Supremacy 1914 you can build units in every province however this is a unit cap which you can expand with research and there are three different branch you can choose from. Regular units which is your normal everyday units. Mercenary which is a powerful class of units but with high upkeep. Colonial which take very few unit cap size. There isn't just military you can control but you can also command civilians which include administrator that can upgrade provinces and stabilize captured land as captured land never stops smoking. Explorer which explore new land. Colonialist which capture new lands. There is no range unit in this game so artillery act like melee units and ships cannot bombard coastline. Now we are in modern days, welcome to World War III. I personally had spent a good amount of time into this game. Like in Call of War you build units in cities only but you don't have to wait and spend resources on upgrading units and small provinces have victory points and cannot revolt. Encouraging fast phase offensive and maneuver and the game encourage you to make the best of your units by having long production time and have combination of buildings to mobilize units. Unlike in Call of War the missile is its own class and can only be shot down by specific units. Missiles are split into three types. Cruised missile, ballistic missile and intercontinental ballistic missile. Each of them can carry three warheads traditional explosive, chemical and nuclear. Missile can be launched from its designated launcher or from another unit. Conflict of nations also bring a new type of unit. Officers. Officer have seven types for seven type of unit in game. Infantry. Air assault. Rotating wings. Fixed wings. Armored. Surface ship. Submarine. Officers have cheap research cost but high mobilization cost. Officer are powerful units on their own but their true power are shown when stacking them with other units as they provide buff to units of the same stack.